Subway Surfer. Some might think it's just a free-to-play mobile game you can have a little bit of fun with and has collectively lowered the IQ of the human race by a not insignificant margin. But no, Subway Surfers may be a little bit more than that. It might have some bizarre lore. So today, we're going to take a look at and learn the bizarre lore of Subway Surfers by Chopo and see what that is all about. Subway Surfers has remained a tyrant in the mobile game world. However, beneath all of the success lies pieces of a story that when all connected create a fairly complex story that nobody has seemed to look into. So my prediction is that the whole Subway Surfers universe is based in this uh, authoritarian government that is ruling over this country and the only way that anyone can have any uh, creative output or spiritual fulfillment is is by surfing the subways. It's the only way. There is no more art. There is nothing else you can do except surf the subways. Join me as we unravel this series and figure out what exactly has been going on. Hi, I'm excited for this. Here in the desert, don't know which one, don't know why, but based on the heat, I don't think I'm gonna survive. But that's not important. If I find water, that's great. But anyway, Subway Surfers is a household name at this point. You probably recognize it for that one mobile game, but trust me, there's so much more to it. You know, Jetpack Joyride was the Subway Surfers of my time since I'm... <laughs> The ripe old age of 27 years old, I didn't really play much Subway Surfers. I did a little bit, like a tiny amount, but I mostly played Jetpack Joyride, and it still has the same kind of idea behind it. And honestly, it's not that much more difficult, or you wouldn't be that much more intelligent for playing it, but I feel like they're very similar. Subway Surfers takes place on a modified version of Earth. This is an Earth where technology is slightly more advanced. Civilization has started to colonize the oceans, and train yards stretch hundreds of miles, but only like 40 feet wide. The first Oh my god, this is the alternate reality where the USA actually has some kind of public transport services. The very alternate reality, this would never happen, where the USA actually built a decent amount of trains. Now that would be incredible. Major time point is on May 24th, 2012, when the game originally was released and where the first major event takes place. Three kids start this saga by sneaking into a train yard and tagging the trains all around. Of these three, we got Jake, the rebellious kid who loves eating and committing mild crimes, Tricky, who comes from riches and is hiding this life from her family, and Fresh, who's just like a dude Fresh? who's happy to be here. He's my favorite, but anyway. His hair is crazy good. While doing the illegal illegalness of a graffiti, Jake gets spotted by the train yard guard and begins the first endless run. This is Ted Lutz, better- And this guy, despite his rotund stomach, has quite some amazing cardio. Listen, I mean, I, I try to run sometimes. I went on, on, on the 5K today. I don't think I'm particularly good at running. This guy, this fella, has- twice the cardio that I could ever hope to have. Known as the security, he is the most powerful character in the universe. He's considered the antagonist, but truthfully, isn't that bad of a guy. Just a dude with anger management issues hellbent on serving middle schoolers justice. Don't believe me? Across literally billions of attempts of these kids trying to evade the guard across every corner of the world. They have- And he doesn't even kill the kids once. Not once managed to escape him. He is the amalgamation of the indomitable human spirit. Whatever he puts his mind to ends up happening. Now, if you're asking why the main crew can travel across the world so frequently. We'll get into that in a bit. Though Ted Lutz is the Sisyphus of the Subway Surfers universe, except instead of pushing a rock up a hill eternally, he is eternally catching children that are surfing the subways. One thing that absolutely needs to be discussed is the hoverboard. Now, the hoverboard actually has an origin story that we would see throughout the entirety of the Subway Surfers animated series. The first season takes- There's a Subway Surfers animated series? They make movies and shows of everything nowadays. It feels like everything gets a TV show or a cartoon at some point now. ...place at least two days before May 24th, 2012. I lied earlier, this is actually the first entry in our timeline. That, that was a complete fallacy. I already introduced the first three main characters, but we have a fourth pal, Yutani. Now, Yutani, in my opinion, is the most important character of the cast. Long story short, she's basically motherless Jimmy Neutron. Like, actually, it's just Jimmy and Hugh Neutron. But this first season is kind of weird. All 11 episodes take place in an incorrect order. Episode... I'm sorry, his eyebrows are crazy. Jake's eyebrows are so strong. I wish I had eyebrows that strong. One is chronologically the third. The second is the last. The third- Just- Oh my god. There's- Look at those eyebrows. I'm sorry, I'm really distracted by this. I am paying attention. It's just those eyebrows are mesmerizing. This is the first. We're gonna look at this in its correct order, which is laid out like this. Starting in episode 3, Tricky's real name is revealed to be Beatrice. Normally, I'd question a name like Tricky, but this is one of those cases where either name is a lose-lose. Tricky has a ballet recital today, I promise this goes somewhere cool, but her mom's kind of preppy and overwhelming. Her dad not so much, there's very consistent- 
Is he he's in Fruit Loops, isn't he? Yeah, he's in Fruit Loops. He seems like a cool, suave type of old fella. He seems like he'd be a cool, rich dad. Trend of supportive father figures throughout this show. It, it, it's a weird thing. I I don't I hate Jake, and coincidentally, he's the only one without a father. Oh. It's an insert correlation. I don't know. Yeah, she's about. Yeah, no. It's a date. Hey, listen, listen. We're not trying to make any points about you know single parent homes or anything like that. Clothes to go skate to her recital so she can change back into the recital clothes and waste everyone's time. Her mom chases her and gives her the family heirloom so she'll look good when she bombs the routine. But what? That's a crazy thing to give to a child that is just gonna skate over to a recital. Don't worry, it's not important. What is, though, is that their yard worker was recording the whole interaction and sends it to a suspicious Dropbox. This will be important soon, but until then, we- Wait, a suspicious Dropbox? See, if it was a suspicious Google Drive, it wouldn't really be that big of an issue, but a Dropbox is gonna cause some problems. We talk about what everybody else is doing until this. Yutani ignores the entire recital thing, trying to make a weather machine, and fails at first, but thanks to her once again supportive father, who happens to be a retired pro skater, uh, he supports her, and it technically succeeds. Did he, did, what, did he ollie off of the weather machine to get it to work? Ah, yes, the one thing we truly needed to get this machine to work. We needed a sick kickflip. This is also when it's revealed Yutani's a streamer, and she genuinely wears the alien costume everywhere. That the, the she's just like me. Oh no, she's a character. Oh, she's a VTuber. Was lacking self-respect. Fresh gets struck by the machine and the rain. Then Jake declares he's hungry, so they go to Yutani's dad's restaurant house place called Skate Heaven. Jake tries to eat the most fries possible. This results in him getting hospitalized, but still making it to Tricky's ballet recital within. A Wait, he didn't even swallow the fries. <laughs> <laughs> Did he immediately have a sodium overdose as soon as they touched his mouth? How, is, how are you that weak? Hour ...with a very normal looking audience, and there's nobody suspicious within it. Tree oh no, it's, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm sure there's nothing weird about this audience right here. No, we've got a uh, man, we've got woman, we've got old lady, and, and rabbit. Oh, you can't even see it! Sorry, you've got rabbit guy. I apologize, you couldn't see Rabbit Guy, who looks like a character from Bioshock because they wear those masks in the entire and game. Tricky's dance goes horribly wrong, but Jake decides to rig the sport in an act of kindness, and to celebrate, Yutani meets up with the three of them at their train yard halfpipe. Just a bunch of talking, Tricky has an existential crisis about her life, Jake almost gets hospitalized for the second time within a half hour, and breaks his at minimum cost $30 skateboard over a $5 bet, and Yutani- Oh, I hope this alternate version of America that made all the trains also has decent health care. During all of this is using her metal detector until all the metal objects surrounding them starts levitating. The metal detector then shoots them into a hole and shoots them out with an all-new turbine. And this is what immediately gets the children thrown onto a watch list. Oh heavens and cheese, now we got the Secret Society. Their organization name might also be Infinity, but the Secret Society sure is a secret society, so we're just gonna call them that. Now you may be wondering, hey wait a dang smack in sec- Wait a- hey wait a damn smack in second, I thought this game was about- running on trains. Why was the groundskeeper yard worker recording Tricky before they even found the turbine? That's also what I was gonna ask. Well, based on the framing of the picture, I'd assume it would have to do with the heirloom. And considering the gem is the same color as all the mystical, magical technology gunk, I'd say it's safe to assume it's important to the story. And that means Tricky's on a watch list for two separate reasons. I- so What does it have to do with the trains? you get to five, they let you pick something out of the prize chest. Oh, okay, what would you pick? I'd, I'd go for the- I'd go for the sticky hand. The sticky hand right there? Yeah, I'd definitely go for that. Oh, but there are a few cool things here. I, I love those springs that go down the stairs. Oh, and there's whistles too. Then the next day happens. Jake, being the leader of the friend group, declares he's hungry and tells his friends all to meet him at Skate Heaven. Now, Fresh ignores his loving parents and the breakfast they probably worked hard on to go be a goofball. But his boombox, Boomy, is missing. Oh, oh no! Frog you freckles, that sure is a crisis. He's gotta find Boomy. And then he does that. that. That's the plot of episode 9. Also, we see but his sister, it. another playable character named Ella. She never does anything important. We can ignore her. At Skate Heaven, not much happens. Of okay, what do we got on the menu today? We have some kind of ice cream dish or maybe yogurts with some with some green beans coming out of it. Delicious. We have just some chips right there. Fantastic. We have a burger with what looks like maybe a slab of butter or, or, or a marshmallow. Stabbed into it. Oh, okay. Interesting. And then we have a sandwich. Nice, healthy sandwich with a milkshake on the side. You know, can't really go wrong with that. What is- is that- is that a marshmallow on the burger? Other than fresh stains is friggin' jays. Oh, this is horrible. Do you know how hard it is to get a stain out of a white shoe like that? Apparently not, because the king, that's named King, shows up and decimates the entire crew with his drip and bars. He- he- he's genuinely cooler than all of them combined, but he's also homeschooled. Is he a playable character in the and game? In the nicest way possible, just by looking at him. 
you you can tell. After this, ah, oh, this is a little special. I don't think we should make any assumptions based on the way the king looks. He could be a fantastic ruler. What is his reforms that he's implemented? What is his stance on the economic downturn uh, and the, on the turn of the 19th century? What does he think about the trains? Jane goes skating and tries to teach Yutani how to skate. It's mostly a failure. Then Jake once again decides he's hungry and goes back to skate heaven. Okay, I can't not notice the Pokemon music in the background. I'm got brainworms. I'm sorry, my brainworms are kicking into high gear right now. This section's mostly filler, with the exception of like some weird tremor thing going on at the episode. It's never brought up again. Uh, uh, uh la later, Yutani brings everyone back to the train yard to show what she's discovered relating to the turbine. Most oh, I've discovered levitation by accident. Oops. Importantly, that it's creating a real, functioning hoverboard. Not much happens other than, again, Jake flops pretty dang hard, but this time there's someone new watching them. How's Jake done anything? Oh, he rigged the score. That's right, he did rig the score at the at the Trixie recital. Oh no, there's someone watching. The it's the rabbit. Guard. That's right, the security guard spots them loitering and tagging and starts going after Jake. You're right, it's definitely not the eyeball. And a regular syrup and a regular subway surface brown plays out. Though part way through, the guard goes underground and finds another completely separate person walking around. Fella. This come on, this is Bioshock, dude. There's a little bit of look, this looks like Bioshock. It really does. Am I just obsessed? Fellas, this is Frank. Of all hey, the Frank. important characters in the series, Frank is by far the most interesting character of note here. He never says anything in the show. He's hidden both in-game and in the show. If you look hard enough, he's everywhere. But why? Well, this episode gives us the best view of what exactly Frank does and why he matters. He walks down underground following some sort of tracker. Ah, uh, yes. I don't know what these are. <laughs> he's up some weird subway control pad, some rotten little child graffiti blocks, whatever he's doing, and then he 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 gets he gets pissed. He, he up and uh, uh. wait, okay. If your ancient incredible ritual that will bring about the end times, etc., 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 Cthulhu and the whatnot gets blocked by graffiti, then maybe your ancient ritual wasn't very good to begin with. And he just walks away. Uh, the the train's gone though. I hope nobody was in. No, I hope nobody was in there though. Uh, uh, J oh yeah, Jake gets caught and brought home, and then Jake sneaks out. So Jake has not slept in about 30 hours and was willing to eat an old sub as he subway surfed to the subway. But when that fails, he decides to go to skate heaven for a fourth time. And I- Because he's hungry because he couldn't eat his disgusting- Grotty sub. God, I hate this child so much that damn schmoil. He knows what you did. I know what you did. You do think you're so- yeah, I hate him too. He sucks. Now remember, all of that was season one of the show, but now we got season two. This is really where things start. It was renewed? Place. This was the first course of an entire series of feasts. As season two, episode one starts, we watch this. Hold on. Okay. The, what? what the, 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 this, is, this is just blank. What? There's nothing to continue with. What? I don't- Where's season what, what two? That, what does that mean? Where's season two? There is Wait. no season two. At there's no season two? In 2019, there has not been a single new episode or even announcement of potential continuations. Aw, oh, man, and it was getting so good as well. Frank was gonna create an underwater city, and there'd be like, these terrible drugs, and there'd be Big Daddy, and- And you know what? I'm a little insulted. I went through like 50 minutes of content and was just waiting to see how far we could stray from the funny, silly mobile game. In fact, the director man said, oh, we came up with like seven seasons worth of story. We can't tell you what happens, in them, but it's going to be so cool. Everyone's going to be like, oh, you're going to love it. You're going to love what we did with everyone. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. It's going to be so cool. Where's this? E I can't believe the kids didn't love the Subway Surfer show. Where's the story? I don't see him. So now that leaves it to me for the time being. I'll have to speculate based on the hints we've been given. This is okay. like trying to make a sandwich, but the only ingredient that I have is tomato slices. Oh, so this is a game theory is what we're saying. I don't even like tomatoes by themselves as slices. If this ages poorly and somehow we get like another season or some continuation, consider this a prediction. But I'm guessing the hoverboard we see all the characters use originated from that turbine and skateboard being modified further. I wouldn't be shocked if they got away with manipulating the technology. I would also say the heirlooms vital to the secret society technology and whatever. And then Frank is like some sort of accomplice of the society. The, the motives of all of them are still totally unknown. They just exist. I don't know what they intend to do, but I guarantee you it probably involves controlling the world. There's a connected series of videos called the dossiers or doc dossiers, it's a French word, I don't know French, and these go over the secret society's files related to each character. Is that Tanuki? A, a tank, tanky? You, you, ta you tanky? Oh, the Frank one sees him deleting his own files for some reason. Again, there's no- 
Well, he just wants to be involved, and there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you just want to be involved, and you want to get in with the kids. Not really much we can work with. There's so many directions I could see this splitting off. It just creates problems for me, and I don't know how I feel about that. Now, coming back to the games, because all of- Finally, now we can surf the subways. It's been a while since we've done any- Actual genuine subway surfing. This exists in a single story. One event has you running in a space station where the subway crew goes to space. What? This robot with the Frank mask and some secret society technologies and color. Oh, there's a robot? Yeah, that was definitely a Five Nights at Freddy's thing. They were like, oh, people like robots now? Yeah, we're gonna Five Nights at Freddy's that. heavily implying they're about finding and manipulating higher tech the world is getting from somewhere. I'd love to get answers, but I don't know. I, I, I really don't. Along with that, there's some aliens that the Society have captured, and these are actually heavily implied to be connected to a separate series connected to Subway Surfers. The creators made another Endless Runner called Blades of Brim. And I'm gonna be honest, this game was significantly more fun than Subway Surfers. The level layout really? actually, like, had more why do the graphics look a bit worse? Uh, is is that just me being an idiot? I think it might be. And I liked it. In this game, a gang of warriors from all across the world gotta beat the Goon Lord because, oh no. The Goon Lord? Oh no. Listen, I've heard enough about Goon Caves to know exactly what that's all about. If he's the Lord of Goonin, if he's the, the A1, he's the tippity top of the Goonin food chain, That that's terrifying. That's a little scary. The goon Lord is gooning and he's making his goon goons goon. Let's stab them. So that's cool. Yeah, you should be stabbed if you goon. It should be it should be illegal to goon too much. No, actually, you know what? We need to let people be free in goon however they want to. Vote for me. For the prime minister, king, or president of whatever your country. I don't know what the head of state of your country is, but whatever it is, you should definitely... Well, you might not get to vote. Sorry if you don't. Well, this might be a plot hole, though. The initial trailer of Blades of Brim had the guard playing it on his phone. This is simultaneously an in-universe mobile game. And also, you shouldn't be shocked by now, this silly kids game franchise that's been around for years has a multiverse. Wow. That's wow. really, like, the way to go for all these types of games. I pr So there's gotta be a spider... Man, version of Subway Surfers, right? I mean, it just makes sense. You could run and you could web swing. It would just make it just makes Promise sense. You, I'm not forcing it. It's just that every single moderately Jetpack Joyride! Oh my god, this brings me back. Flappy Bird, Candy Crush, Jetpack Joyride, Mutant Ninja, Doodle Jump, Angry Birds, Temple Run. Oh, all great. Popular franchise has some sort of alternate dimension or multiverse. Oh boy! I think that's all there is related to the society, but there's actually a few sequel games. So let's take a look at them. December okay. 23rd, 2019. Sub Damn, it took a while for them to release any kind of sequel. Free Surfer's Airtime is like this 2D exclusive racing game that's exclusive to Snapchat oh, games. For yeah. some if you want to play this, it's exclusive to Snapchat. Is Snapchat still so popular that they can just get things like that? The only thing I know about Snapchat is that I have a streak with my brother. That's the only time I ever use it is to keep my streak going with my brother. And the fact that David Dobrik uploads pictures there every day, and that's it. That's all I know about Snapchat. You have to go into a Snapchat DM and select the game, or at least you could, because Snapchat removed this feature in early 2023. I hope at least one person found out Snapchat games don't exist anymore because of this video and because of Subway Surfers. This was how I found out. Wait, Snapchat just does not have games, so can you not play the game anymore? Is it gone forever? 7th, 2022, Subway Surfers Tag. I forgot to mention that Yutani can board now, and that's character development, I think. It is one everyone looks like a Muppet and they're being mischievous, but looking at the trailers, this game looks pretty fun. I think I'll have to check it out. Just kidding, it's an Apple Arcade Wh exclusive. What is this? I have enough self-respect to say that I'm not paying for a subscription service for mobile games. Apple, you can have as many fun, silly, unique, exclusive mobile games that I totally want to play as much as you want. But this is a test of integrity that I have been and will be continuing. That's right, never pay for video games. Not one time ever. Continuing to pass, you are cracked out of your mind if you think I'm going to pay 15 schmuckos a month for this. No, $15 a month? Yeah, that's a bit too much. Fourth, 2022 Subway Surfers match. Let's you help Jake vandalize public property. At this point, Jake fully deserves to be behind bars. I'll help snitch where needed. Just know I'm not a narc, I'm a Pisces. This is a puzzle type game, that's great. They've made Candy Crush for Subway Surfers. Why didn't they just make Subway Surfers 2? I remind you that all these kids are being tracked by an entire organization and nothing's being done about it. Anyway, April 21st, 2023, Subway Surfers Blast. This is another puzzle game adventure, but this time you gotta make their hangouts look nicer and that's really all that goes on here. One of the trailers starts the kids in some sort of puzzle dimension and like my freshman year of high school, we're never, ever gonna bring it up again because nothing of value was attained here. And that's every other game. You'd think that's after it? a decade there'd be something else going on. Though I guess 
what I thought Subway Surfers was like so popular. I thought it had everyone. All the kids were playing it. Everyone. I forgot to turn the oven on all the way. Now the food's probably still gonna be edible, but it'll be a bit undercooked and like like it'll be a little too late now. Luckily though, we still have the silver lining that is the titan of the main game, Subway Surfers. This game. Oh yeah! All right, time to get into the main game. The main meat, the bones of the bones of the kitchen. The past decade has the marrow. absolutely continued to update on a monthly basis. New characters, cosmetics, and all of that stuff has been added over the years. Unf oh, they're still going. I wonder if there's any like hardcore Subway Surfer enjoyers. Are there Subway Surfer tubers? Like there's, there's poker tubers. Hey, hey, how's it going? I'm one of them. Are there Subway Surfer tubers in the same way? Oh my God. Subway Surfer's World Tour trailer has 4.5 million views and it came out one month ago. Subway Surfers is, wait, this is actually really big. Oh my God. There are Subway Surfer tubers. This is still huge. People still love this. Oh, wait, wait. 4K, wait, 4K likes, 445 comments, 4.5 million views. Oh, is this an ad? This might be an ad. Oh yeah, they upload these videos to be ads and then they show on pre-rolls and that's where the views come from. That makes a lot more sense. Now that I've thought about it, I feel like the days of Subway Surfer, oh, it might be behind them actually. Wow, they just uploaded the animated show just on YouTube five years ago. And there's never been an update since. This was the last one. And they turned off the comments too? Fortunately, despite there being hundreds of characters that have been added to the roster, I would argue we've already covered all of the ones that have or could have any plot relevance. The animated series is the most relevant anyone is, and only seven of them show up in it. Like there's known Cthulhu monsters in an- I knew that Cthulhu would have something to do with this. Zombie. But Okay, that's a Plants vs. Zombies reference, isn't it? Nothing. None of this matters. There's a Burger King skin. I own the Burger King. Frank goes to Burger King. It might be important. I don't know. They don't address any of this. Is Burger King gonna be important later on? Is Burger King lore accurate for this universe? I mean, let's be honest. Burger King is not very good. I can't think of many reasons why people would go to Burger King unless they're spending ridiculous amounts of money to advertise in these video games. I will say, though, however, they do a chicken royale. It's a little chicken burger, and it's pretty good. I would love to treat this like a situation where this is a goofy baby game and shrug it off, but there was, and still has an attempt to continue the story through the tiniest hints that nobody seems to take note of, even though millions of people have for sure seen this gameplay under their little attention. I am stimulated right now. And reducing TikToks. I hope the characters get royalties for all this footage because now we- Wait, why is it paper now? Bring back the- bring back Family Guy. Yeah, one teensy tiny little itty bitty baby question still up in the air. And maybe that extra cash from those royalties could help them out, but I can't help but ask. <laughs> yeah? What is it? How do they manage to travel so much? After years and years of doing nothing but vandalizing train yards, these little freaks have managed to get to every corner of the planet and do what they always do, vandalize in other places. They're expanding their little atrocities. Because they got rich parents. Trixie has rich parents, so Trixie's just like, Mom, can I take my friends to Guatemala? And they're like, oh, okay. Having baby penguins in the Arctic, drawing penises in Australia, going to Europe, all the bad things a person can do has been... <laughs> <laughs> going to Europe. All the bad things a person could do. All right, you, you, you win this time, Jopo. You win this time. Done by them. And they just smile. They just grin ear to ear knowing what they're doing. I see the wrath in those empty eyes. You can't fool me. Two important things happen throughout all of this. Somehow, thanks to the secret society and their efforts, Yukani has been able to understand the weird turbine. So now all of the kids have access to absurd gravity and magnetic technology that we see in the power-ups. Why has the government not arrested this them? This is how they travel across the planet. They wake up, fly to Shanghai or something, indulge in crime time, and then head back home and do it all again the next day. That's all. These kids are able to do all this stuff just because they want to. No financial gain, no sightseeing, just train yard hijinks at every train yard. Okay, so they're pretty powerful, but could Goku beat this them? This is also how they recruit new kids. Every location, they get a couple new subway servers to join their crew and take the operation even further. Wow, they all speak English too? None of this technology is shared with the world, despite the amount of money these kids could earn and how much the world could potentially benefit. You well, they're, they're 12 years old. They don't know how, but they don't know about money. They don't know how the value of a dilla. Just got to accept these funny little guys are using this gear to run around stupid places across the world and even beyond it. 
just because they can. And I can tell you, Jake knows what he's responsible for as the- Yeah, these characters are definitely the strongest in their verse. It's time to get some power scaling discussions going on about the Subway Surfers characters. Could they be uh, One Piece Luffy? A friend group leader. Never have a friend group leader. I promise you they'll end up like Jake and his corruptive influence. So it's what do we do now? The world is at the mercy of whatever these seventh graders want. Who can stop this? The government. The train guards! He must stop it at all costs. The guard! Yes! yes! I wasn't lying. The goat! Every single day, he's following these kids to train yards and doing whatever he can to make sure they get served their proper justice. They can run as much as they can, but no matter what acrobatic Applebee's bullshit they pull off, the guard and his noble steed are always a second behind them, waiting for the slightest slip up on their run to snatch them up, send them home, just so they do it again the next day. He is a modern Sisyphus who deserves I literally said that at the start of the video. I said instead of pushing the rock, he catches the kids. That's what I said. Wow. Damn. Did I watch this video? No, I didn't. I, I didn't watch this video, but it feels like I did. The world and so much determination literally radiates from every crevice of him in those khakis. Okay, but could the train guard beat Sans is the question. Justice. And the guard solos your face. Dude, I, <laughs> I was talking about could he beat Goku as well. Oh, this is good. This is so funny. It's, uh, am I, am I, am I too? Can I see the future? Favorite verse and the Burger King. He might not even be getting paid for this. He just hates vandalism that much and good for him. Honestly, what did Mumbai do to have Jake exist? And I, I just know this kid's fuming every day, every waking moment running from him, never being able to escape those stupid eyebrows thickened by a single nano. The, st the eyebrows too! I talked about the eyebrows! Peter, every time he's caught, they're so thick, you could fit an entire Hampton Hotel in there. Okay. That's what I've been saying! I'm so glad that we seem to be on the same wavelength with this, Chopo. I'm so glad that we, we have the same ideas. We are the same. Right. What can I say? That's everything we know for certain so far. This has yet to conclude a story and has been mostly stagnant for years. So much could branch from here, but nothing's done about it. We're just in an endless limbo with no escape. Just like these train yards, who knows when it will end, if ever. What's the deal with the heirloom? Why is Frank everywhere, including Burger King? What does the guard eat to have this level of cardio? We don't know. I've been trying to figure out, like, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on my diet of, I have, I have some tea in the morning, so I like a cup of tea, and then I have some, well, I have some tea in the afternoon, too, uh, and I have, like, a, a salad sometimes. Like, how do I get this cardio? And honestly, that really does suck. All we know is that Frank put Jake on some sort of list. Frank undoubtedly is set to be important. This technology is wanted, but again, nothing was ever done about it. So ultimately, we're back to square one. What the average person sees Subway Surfers as. That being an endless runner where the guard always catches the surf is exactly what's been playing out this entire time. You can remove any fraction of the built-up story and currently, nothing would change. It was set up and never followed through. That's a really nice room. I don't like that. But who knows, maybe someday we'll be able to come back to the story in the future. Maybe some point down the line we'll get to see this story move on further. I can't really see anything, nor can I confirm what happened behind the scenes to see- I really hope that this goes somewhere because it seems very interesting. That the story to this point. That being getting a drip of story every blue moon in this drought. So if the Subway Surfers peeps see this video somehow, hi guys. I'm sure we would all love to see you guys continue the story so this specific discussion can age badly and if you do make another continuation please don't make these compilations there's like 50 minutes of content you made 20 official compilations that each made millions of views that's kind of smart but also a little embarrassing I'm calling you out for this and No you make some good ad revenue from and that that'll do guys I hope you enjoyed if you look in the distance you might just see a mirage that coincidentally what? is a statistic I'm obligated to tell you to subscribe and give me well, okay, I guess I will. Oh, I already am. Okay, problem. I already am subscribed. But secondary problem, you're not subscribed yet. The person behind the camera, you watching this video, you're not subscribed to Chopo so you can see these wonderful, wonderful lore videos, which is an issue because most people aren't subscribed and you should be subscribed to Chopo. The link is always in the description. It always is down there. You can watch lore videos on many, many different things as well as know that you are doing your part to help Chopo hit 200,000 subscribers. And I'm going to hit that like button right there. And if you want to see more of my dumb face, then you can always subscribe here as well.